Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. We're continuing with our chapter 10 notes, and today we're going to talk about chapter 10.3, which is about solids. So when we talk about solids, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about definite shape, definite volume, all of that stuff. We're going to talk about the fact that um, in terms of kinetic theory, there are two types of solids that we discuss. Crystalline solids, which have highly regular arrangements of their particles or components. And an example would be table salt, sodium chloride, or pyrite, which is iron um, to sulfide. And so when we're talking about solids, we're talking about, uh, with crystalline solids, this very regular arrangement of their particles. Remember when we talked about ionic compounds, and in this case, we know that we have um, sodiums and we have chloride ions and again they're hanging out in this crystal structure and they're attracted to each other very strongly because of the opposite charges and this is actually an electron uh, photograph of using an electron microscope of these pyrite particles so crystalline solids have this crystal lattice structure and again here this is lithium chloride and so you'll see the positive and negative ions they have a very ar a regular arrangement of their particles and again the reason that they are not having a lot of motion is because they're fixed in these positions and all they really are able to do is vibrate in these fixed positions. So the particles are still in motion, but the motion is mostly um, just vibration. And again, it's very rigid because these opposite charges are very attracted to one another. So whether it's atoms in the case of solid water, excuse me, in this case of um, iron particles, um, if you had the element iron or if you had uh, ionic compounds it would be ions and if we were talking about for instance ice which would be water in its solid state it would be molecules but again when we're talking about crystalline solids we're talking about this very very regular arrangement of the particles and so there are seven basic crystal units we just hold you responsible for the fact that you know that there are seven basic shapes of crystal particles. Um, you do not have to memorize these. So we talk about a tetragonal shape. We talk about the unit cell being hexagonal, orthorhombic, trigonal, triclinic, monoclinic, and isometric or cubic. And when I showed you sodium chloride and lithium chloride, those were more cubic structures. The other type of solid that we talk about are um, amorphous solids and these have considerable amount of disorder in their structures and when we think about amorphous solids we think about glass and we think about plastics and as you can see here there's quite a bit of disorganization in the structure so where crystalline solids have very definite melting points amorphous solids because there's so much randomness they are still just vibrating around the particles, um, but when they are heated, they eventually just kind of flow. So we have to talk about now the differences between the phases of matter that we've talked about so far. So we talked about gases first, then liquids, and then solids. So the intermolecular forces of attraction that are going on between these particles, um, when we talk about gases, they have very little intermolecular attraction between the particles, and so they exist as gases. Substances that have stronger intermolecular force of attraction typically exist as liquids, and those with very strong intermolecular forces of attraction, or ionic compounds, tend to exist as solids. So when we talked about intermolecular force of attraction um, way back in ionic bonding in Chapter 6, we talked about the fact that these intermolecular forces are not bonds. They're just forces of attraction that occur because of the way the electrons are arranged. And so we talked about, back when we talked about covalent bonds and ionic bonds, we talked about dipole-dipole interactions. And that's typically where you have a positive and a negative region of the 
atom or molecule. And again, the dipole-dipole is about electronegativity differences. So you remember the thing that's more electronegative, like if you had hydrogen chloride, the electrons are spending more of their time on chlorine than they are in hydrogen, so you get these dipole-dipole interactions. Hydrogen bonds, again, are these attractive forces between hydrogen and the negative portion of another molecule, and then the London dispersion forces. So for phase differences, solids we talked about have a definite volume and shape. Their particles are very attracted to one another, so they actually are packed in fixed positions. The particles are not free to move, so they can only vibrate. Liquids, definite volume, indefinite shape. That's because the particles are close together, but not fixed, so they move freely and they can flow. And then in the case of a gas, no definite shape, no definite volume. The particles are far apart, great distances from one another, and they are moving freely and rapidly. So I finish up this part of the chapter by reminding you of the states of matter we've talked about before. Solid, fixed positions, particles don't move freely. Liquids, very close together, move freely. Gas, far apart, moving freely, moving rapidly. And plasma is that very high energy state where they're actually glowing. And when we think of plasma, we think of lightning as an example of plasma, where you have a great deal of energy and the energy gets released and then the particles relax back down to a gas. So for today, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.